Who would have thought that Blizzard could still be shit? Oh, mo- most people. Damn it. Yep. Damn it. There ain't no good news yet. <laughs> you didn't come to us for it <laughs> if you did. You can hand me one of your waters, by the way. Oh, yeah, sure. I got, I got water for days. FIFO. <laughs> I hate you should not be able to FIFO the waters you keep in the studio and I yet, do he, and yet he can I do I do FIFO anyways this is the Gamers 2 podcast your weekly roundup of news and commentary related to the video game industry and anything else that piques our interest like FIFOing water Savannah bananas and I, what other wacky I don't have anything wacky to say other than that. Skateboarding? Longboarding? Skateboarding, longboarding. Magazine love? Love for magazines. How do you guys feel about magazines? I miss magazines. They have a special place in my heart. I used to enjoy going out and going to Barnes & Noble and hunting down a a paintball magazine. That was a classic. Wow, that's a niche one. Yeah. There were not many people coming to Barnes & Noble looking for a paintball magazine. I could tell you exactly where they were. Last row, all the way on the right, bottom. Not all the way on the right. There was like two. It broke into two. Like they had two two uh, categories. categories. Yeah, not categories, but the the aisle consisted of two fixtures. Ah, and it was on the right fixture on the bottom, in the towards the the front of that fixture. So, yeah, I always got stuck with like the hunting and and guns and stuff like that. Those magazines. That sounds about right. Yeah, outdoorsy type a little yep. bit. Yep. Uh, good stuff. Good stuff. Well, it's the age of the internet now. It's killed all things. Like this magazines. Podcast. Like this podcast. Yeah. Wait, hold on. <laughs> that moment where the main character's talking and they blink themselves out of existence on accident. Yep. We're not dead yet. We're getting there, though. I'm not dead. Mm-hmm. Yes, you are. I don't. Anyway, yeah, I got some things you could spend money on if you weren't able to buy Savannah Bananas tickets. Yep, or magazines. Savannah Bananas, by the way, for people that don't know, are baseball, but banana style. And what that means, you got to go look it up because it's a great time. It's a great party atmosphere, fun time. This ain't your dad's baseball. You know what I mean? I do know what you mean. This is your, your bananas baseball. I'm not sure what we're watching anymore. <laughs> <I don't either. laughs> Fucking Razor Ramon over here. He does have that vibe. He does. Hopefully he doesn't do drugs and kill himself. Uh, I'm waiting anyway. for the toothpick to show up. Oh, yeah. uh, That guy's wearing a biker helmet. Anyway, let's talk about number one in the new releases called the Blanc for the PC and Switch. And number two, Journey to the Savage Planet. Employee of the Month edition. That is Matt Carpenter. (laughs) (laughs) For PlayStation and Xbox. Uh, Number three, OutZone for the PC. Number four, 10 Dates. Won't ever have those. For the PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. Oh, and a Switch, too. So, hey, if you're on the road and you got to have dates, there's 10 of them. What if it's 10 dates as in, like, what you eat? Oh, interesting. That doesn't seem like many dates, then. It doesn't. I have a bag of dates in my fridge. Maybe that's how many you have left in the entire story that they tell you during the game is your survival struggle while those... It's like nine lives, but it's just them kind of whittling away. Maybe ten dates is a serving size. Maybe ten dates is a currency. What if it's similar to 99 red balloons? Anyway. (laughs) Number five. Tau Plan Arcade Shoot 'em Up Collection, Volume One. Do we agree that that's how that's pronounced? Sure. All right. For the PC, number six, Truxton for the PC. Number seven, Twin Cobra for the PC. Number eight, Wanted, Dead, for the PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. Number nine, Zero Wing for the PC. Number ten, Cities Skylines Remastered for the PlayStation and Xbox. Number 11, Pharaoh, A New Era for the PC. Number 12, Returnal makes its way officially to PC. Warzone Season 2 is out. Uh, Number 14, Gamora for the PC. Not spelled the same as 
Zoe Saldana. Number 15, Hydrofoil Generation for the PC. Theater Rhythm Final Bar Line for the PlayStation and Switch. Sorry, something on my phone is feeling really weird. Uh, number 17, Wild West Dynasty for the PC. Number 18, Gigantosaurus Dino Kart for the PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch. Number 19, The Settlers New Allies for the PC. That is running on Snowdrop Engine. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Weird, right? Yeah. Number 20, Tales of Symphonia Remastered for the PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch. Number 21, Wild Hearts for the PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. And number 22, The Dreams in the Witch House for the PC. Uh, Wild Hearts is, we've been hearing about that one for a while. Yeah. That's Wonder. the one that has like the like build up towers and stuff in the middle of giant boss encounters and yada yada. Atomic Hearts next week, so yep. be ready for that. Mm -hmm. Wild Hearts. Yeah, I'm curious how Atomic Hearts is going to do. That has a lot of hype around it. The other one that caught my eye was Hydro Hydrofoil Generation. Yes. Do you think that you race hydrofoils? Oh, that'd be interesting. Yeah. I like the yep. like just the thought of it. I do too. And then uh, PSVR two's next week as well. Oh, interesting. I've been Review kits have been out. So. Yeah, I've seen a lot of those and a lot of people online talking about it. Basically annoyed that it has no PC support. Yeah, it's, yeah. Annoying, but I don't think I'm surprised. No, because it's they're probably. Um, taking a loss on it but it's kind of one of those catch 22s where it's like well you could make a boatload more money if you sold yeah. it on pc you right but oh well such is life um the question you have to ask yourself is do you want to do the activision blizzard microsoft acquisition bullshit or do you not want to do or do you personally want to speak the words or do you want to sit over there and shake your head in disgust and be like, I'm so sick of hearing about this? I'll speak the words about the second part of the Activision Blizzard news. Okay. Not That's the first part. The first part. All right. That means I'm number one. Not like I'm number one, but I'm speaking number one. Nah, right, go for it. You can be number one. <laughs> no. It might be the only time in your life you get to be number one. Poof. <laughs> There's the backhanded. <laughs> I knew it was too setting, good to be you true. You were setting it up. It was so easy. <laughs> uh, number one, the updates for Microsoft's acquisition of Activision Blizzard never end. Here's yet another roundup. Bobby Kotick will reportedly retain his position as CEO of Activision Blizzard if the proposed acquisition by Microsoft is blocked by regulators or scrapped altogether. That almost sounds like a threat. I'll still be here. <laughs> you want their lives to be spared? <laughs> Fox Business Sources said Activision Blizzard views the UK's Competition and Markets Authority as the, quote, only real potential roadblock, end quote. The UK CMA's provisional report on the Microsoft Activision Blizzard acquisition includes an admission from Microsoft that putting games into, into Games Pass subscription service cannibalizes sales. Microsoft's estimated percentage of decline was redacted from the report. Uh, and then finally, Microsoft will attend a closed hearing about its proposed acquisition of Activision with the EU's competition regulator in Brussels on Tuesday, February 21st. Um, there's also a rumor that Sony execs met with um, Microsoft, but I feel like it's a very weak rumor because the rumor is based on Sony execs uh, flight plans for their jets. Apparently there was uh, they went to Seattle. Ah, but Bungie's also headquartered in Seattle, so 
I don't know. So you're telling me there's a chance? <laughs> yeah. Basically. That we might get a 1v1 fight. You know what? What the hell was that called? Um, Battle Royale. The MTV Celebrity Death Matches, maybe? Celebrity Death Matches is a thing, yeah. That. We need that for Microsoft and Sony. Okay, all right. Let's talk about number two, then, while we're yeah. still here, unfortunately. Yeah. Never ends. <sighs> Activision Blizzard is mandating a partial return to the office. As reported by VGC, the return was first made public by purportedly unhappy employees posting anonymously about the change in policy. An Activision Blizzard representative confirmed the change to GamedIndustry.biz. Quote, in close partnership with each leadership team, bullshit. We crafted a plan that <laughs> is customized based on what's best for our business and our team's bullshit. We look forward to the increased real-time in-person collaboration and opportunities. This change will foster bullshit. End quote. <laughs> uh, a person familiar with the situation said that the policy would start for Activision employees on the week of April 10th. Blizzard offices will have their three-day in-office mandate beginning the week of July 10th. I can tell you they will have a lot of people saying, hey, I found a new job. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, Sony's over there licking their lips, being like, oh, we want that. We got we to gotta acquire that talent. Have you heard about Jade Raymond's new <laughs> work from home studio? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, basically. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's not not wise, but it's it's just stupid. There is a clear divide. You've been doing it for three years. You've shipped multiple titles. Yeah. Like, not even just we've maintained multiple titles. You've shipped them. You've launched two WoW expansions, two classic WoW expansions. The only thing I can imagine is, obviously, upper management doesn't like the whole idea of work from home. We all know that. No, because they're sick of everybody having the benefits they do from when they work from home the entire time. Yeah. And the other reason, which we talked oh, about do downstairs. Do <laughs> I mean, I'll do it. I'm pretty sure all the upper management that was accused of harassing all their employees is pissed they can't harass them anymore. And the other thing, I'm wondering if there's like a middle management thing too, to where like middle management, there's these guys are taking their clothes off a lot. I'm just throwing that out there. I don't know how to feel about it. <laughs> I don't know either. Like I'm not against it, but I'm confused. I feel I'm like, I feel like if we had audio, it'd probably help. Probably. You know what? It also goes with their team name, Party Animals. That's true. They are wearing fake suspenders. Anyway. Um, I'm wondering if middle management doesn't know, like, because they're the ones that are, like, gonna ha they have to deal with the, the um, when I say middle management, I mean, like, the people who are, like, the team leaders. Yeah, and the, the, the creative directors, those types, those types of yeah. people. Like, they're the ones that have to deal with, you know, their their team not being around and trying to organize things and stuff like that. But even then... I'm wondering if they don't have the skill set or know how to, and they're just, like, telling people... I mean, there's like, potentially that, but they're also the same people that they're going to have these teams now coming to them and going, well, what do I do, and blah, 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 or should I just leave, or yada, yada, and they're not going to have any of the answers. Yeah. Yeah. It's... This is one of those know, situations it's... where I hope, like, we get, like, a Jason Schreier piece. Yeah, well, I'm hoping it's that, but I also hope that they just start immediately like walking back what they're saying. Yeah, I mean that would be ideal. Like, but it seems based on stories that have come out about an internal conversation that happened and a bunch of other things, it sounds like they're doubling down on it and basically told Q QA workers to go fuck themselves. Mikey Barra basically came out. And this is the part that like baffled me and pissed me off because Barra is supposed to be the one that's supposed to be the. Yeah, the, the new the blood saving face yeah. of all of this. And he basically came out and verbatim. This is not a direct quote, but verbatim said, oh, uh, the pay cuts that are going to be happening at a 53 percent rate because of the like the bonuses everybody was going to be getting are getting cut in 53 percent are happening to the everybody, not just the lower end. So it's not that bad. We don't make that much more money than you, yada, yada. And it's like, how unbelievably fucking tone deaf are you quick? That you don't think that you make that much more money than your QA guys, 
who the last time a job got posted for them, which I believe was today, were your hourly rates for between $15 an hour and $22 an hour for your QA place. And I would love to know your fucking quality of living and cost of living, which is a moronic phrase to begin with, in California at $15 an hour. Yeah, you can. We have in our area where we live, we have some of the lowest cost of living as far as like housing goes. Other things, maybe not, but like housing, our cost of living here is extremely cheap compared to the rest of the country. And you couldn't survive for $15 an hour. No. Like you could not. It just is not not possible. Okay. Not Um, without like splitting it amongst six people in an apartment? Yeah. It's like that's just not. We're on a while. Not just feasible at all. Mm. You're going to do that in California. Good joke. Yeah. Wild. Wild, wild, wild. I don't know. I don't know. Like, I would... I would. If There's I, a if reckoning I was, brewing. If I was in those teams, more than likely the first conversation I'm going to have with my supervisor is, I'm now seeking other employment. I'm just yeah. telling you now, I'm figuring it out. Mm-hmm. If I like my supervisor. If I don't like my supervisor... Then I'm doing it in the background and then telling them, hey, I'm leaving. You shouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Yep. Well. I don't I'm know. not saying that it is, it is multiple things, it's right? Like, I get them wanting to have people come back just as like a general concept. I get that. I, and I also get them saying, hey, we want you guys to be in like three days out of the week instead of five. Mm-hmm. Okay, both those two concepts make sense on in a, at like certain levels, but it's more of a hey, we'd like to see you in. Try to come in once a month if you can, or you know, just some some other way other than hey, we know we've been hiring people across the country this entire time. You're now mandated to come into the office in California three days out of the week. What? I live in New York. It's it's just so it's just wild to me that how much resistance there always is to change. And uh, you know, there will, will there this From will corporations come corporations yeah. that have made money consistently, set record profits last year, and are now to the point where you're going to lose a shit ton of talent because you as one of the probably easiest industries to work from home are canceling it. Yeah, I, I think that I think what needs to happen is like some some larger entity, uh probably like a medium sized developer, needs to do it very successfully. And that their big companies will need that to to realize that, you know, they're full of shit, essentially. But yeah, there'll be a reckoning. We'll get there. We'll get there eventually. Work from home. There will be. That or, you know, we'll roll out the guillotines and start lopping heads off. Number three. Cake for all. Cake for all. Cake or death. Let them eat it. I'll get my biggest hoop skirt I can. (laughs) Go full Marie Antoinette. (laughs) I don't, I don't think that's how she sounded, but I mean, <laughs> maybe. Gotta, gotta hope she was. If she... All right, number three, Mick Gordon, the composer of upcoming shooter Atomic Heart. Hey, we just mentioned that. Has donated his fee for working on the game to aid people affected by Russia's invasion of Ukraine. His statement follows numerous allegations against a mud fi- mud. I always want to call it mudfish, but it's a mudfish, which I, I mean... hate. At least it's not mungfish. I'd hate that more. Or mungfish. Ooh. Also bad. Uh, his statement follows numerous allegations against mungfish, including the stu- that the studio and game are funded by Russian authorities, although Gordon does not specifically refer to those claims. He announced he will donate his fee to the Australian Red Cross Ukraine Crisis Appeal in support, a quote, in support of the people of Ukraine who are heroically defending their country against aggression, end quote. 
allegations against Mungf- <laughs> Munfish has emerged <laughs> across the internet in recent months, drawing links between the studio and the Russian government or Russian-based investors. If the government ties are true, some people are concerned that buying Atomic Heart will indirectly fund the authorities currently waging war against Ukraine. Munfish attempted to address these with a statement, these allegations, with a uh, statement on Twitter, although it did not specifically deny any of the allegations. So, Mick uh, Gordon known for composing Doom, or not composing Doom, depending on which timeline you live in. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Mick Gordon, really, uh, you know, hot in the streets. I believe that means they walked off, but I'm not positive. Oh, I don't know how any of this works. Oh, it is ninth inning. Okay. Yeah, but there's still six minutes to go, so I don't know how this works. Maybe they're just trying to like party for six minutes to run the clock down. No, it might be like... it might be that you can win and then or it's whatever happens by the end of that time. Not sure. Interesting. I'd have to look up the rules for banana ball. It's been a while. That's what anyway. I think. Let's go to number four. Ghost Ship Games has announced the opening of Ghost Ship Publishing. The division intends to support game makers in developing titles that prioritize open communication and the player experience. The news comes after a month after Ghost Ship Games announced that Deep Rock Galactic, at the time, sold 5.5 million units. The developer was acquired by Embracer in August 2021, alongside of seven other studios. Ghost Ship is a weird uh, yeah. thing to have pop up after we literally talked last week. About the ghost ship. Yep. Uh, I'm also slowly realizing how Embracer is taking over everything. Mm. Because, like, every week I'm like, I'll see something and then somehow it'll really be- relate back to Embracer because they own own them or whatever. Own whatever. Embracer just doing the hand. <laughs> really? Hand ringing of like, <laughs> we do it on everything. <laughs> For sure. It's insane. Uh, which I think we're back. Yeah, we're right, right into it again. Number five. As part of its Q3 2022 financial report, the Embracer Group announced that there are five new games based on the Lord of the Rings IP in production by external game studios. They are currently expected to be released by the end of March 2024. There's two games that we know of. The first is the long-delayed, story-driven action-adventure game Gollum uh, by Daedalec. Is it Daedalec? Day- yeah, I don't know. Daedalec Entertainment. The second game is the survival title. What's up? You know how to pronounce that word. That is the same word that all the gods in Elder Scrolls are. Oh, um. It's like Daedric. Yeah. So Daedalec is correct. Well, I look at it and I always think Daedric. So I'm like, yeah. that can't be right. Um, anyways, the second game is the survival title, The Lord of the Rings Return to Moria, where players will embark on an all-dwarf adventure to explore and survive the iconic underground region with co-op support for up to eight dwarves. Not, not well, you know, eight dwarves in game. I guess eight dwarves could also play the game, but like, <laughs> so it's that's immediately what I thought when you read that. It's just we, they only support eight dwarves for normal humans, but eight dwarves. <laughs> uh, that's that's kind of nuts, though. Five Lord of the Rings IP games, and they're all scheduled to release before March twenty twenty four. Yeah, when the last time they tried to release one in the last four years has been canceled. Yeah. And that's not a, good, not a good track record. Yeah, right. And that's external studios. So, Minds of Moria actually looked like it'll be fun. So, I agree. I'm hoping to that one. Gollum did not look that. So, yep. And it's so like 50 50 shot then? I feel like Embracer has made really interesting moves because they're going to be making money on things that they didn't yeah. do any. They like, <laughs> hey, we'll back you guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's you like an back immediate. Us or own us. Uh, tomato tomato <laughs> <laughs> uh, they'll just be like yeah that's what we said <laughs> mm, did, did we stutter oh my god Embracer. Love when people don't want to answer me let's talk about number six a large number of titanfall and apex legends veterans have split from ea to form a new studio wildlight entertainment According to the new Seattle LA based studio, quote, we are a new fully funded entertainment. I almost said entertainment. That's not even a word. 
fully funded entertainment studio hyper focused on creating big bold original cre- oh, don't say it original gaming universes of epic quality and scale we've been quietly working on a new ip for some time and while it might be a bit before we can say more we're beyond excited for what's to come end quote wildlight entertainment's twitter account clarified that the studio's first game will be a shooter a look at wildlight staff base shows that nearly every member of the team is a respawn entertainment veteran that worked on titanfall apex legends or in most cases both I so really a like shooter a, makes sense. I'd really like a new studio to come out and be like, you know what, we're a quiet studio that plans on making small scale games. I, I would <laughs> love for one to come out with it has like Titanfall respawn reps or like veterans, Call of Duty veterans, and they're just gonna be like We exist and we'll make something eventually, but like first thing up is this puzzle game we've been working on. <laughs> and you're like, Honestly, everyone would be like, I'm so interested, <laughs> like and then it comes yeah. out and it's literally just a jigsaw game where it's just a bunch of puzzle pieces that you just pick up and put down and they're like, start small. <laughs> Set that bar low. Uh, Cozy games. You put together jigsaws. <laughs> Cozy game. I like it. <laughs> uh, that's funny. In this game, you knit. I really wish I had more like time and energy because I would love to have tracked all the new, um, new studios. And like, just kept like a log of, oh yeah, their started success or new like studio whatever. Started date by former blah 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 yeah. blah blah blah. <laughs> and then have like a wall with the tacks and the strings, you know, like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, where are we at here? All right, number seven. Sony might be developing some sort of wireless earbuds for the PS Five. According to Insider Gaming sources, uh, the wireless earbuds will be scheduled for release towards the end of the 2023 fiscal year. Sony has also been rumored to be developing a new wireless headset for the PS5. Uh, The PS5 earbuds project is named Project Nomad. And according to Tom Henderson, the earbuds will have an approximate battery life of five hours. Regarding the headset, the company is supposedly developing a new wireless headset dubbed the Voyager. This headset is set to be released at a similar time as the Nomad and will have a similar functionality to the InZone H7 headset. The H7 offers 360 spatial sound, 30 hours of battery life, noise canceling, and other features. Earbuds. um, Interesting concept. I feel like five hours is too short of battery life. I also agree. Um, It could be okay if they charge uh extremely fast but um if the headset not that i played my ps5 enough to warrant a wireless headset but if i did theoretically and if it wasn't outrageously expensive 360 spatial audio and 30 hour battery life sounds, tempting sounds much, great yeah <laughs> much much better than five hours yeah Yep, 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 yep. Let's do some rumor roundup, shall we? Rumor roundup. Every time I think rumor roundup, see, I can't wait for this. I know. This is very <laughs> contextual, all right? I have watched a lot of Encanto. Because huh? I have a Encanto? Huh? Encanto? Huh? Encanto? Huh? Encanto? <laughs> You're fucking with me. It's getting hard. <laughs> Let's see how many I can get you before you started breaking. Is this the Disney show? Yeah, it's the Disney movie. We don't talk about Bruno? We don't talk about Bruno. You nailed it. So I, I only know any of this because it, I got told the other day we don't talk about Bruno. And with you were no like, context. What? I have no idea. And they're like, what, in Kanto? And I was like, what the fuck do you mean? And they're like, the Disney thing. And I went, what? So so what context did I get told that in? <laughs> I don't know because... <laughs> We don't talk about Bruno could come up at a lot in conversation, surprisingly. Uh, <laughs> Not even the name of the movie. I know, but it's it's a song that everyone gets stuck in their head. Um. Oh yeah, so I've been sorry, watching sorry, a lot sorry. of Encanto, and what? <laughs> <laughs> and in the first song, there's a part where she sings. Um, uh, I think it's Cousin Roundup, Cousins Roundup or something like okay. that. 
and it's a musical, so it's like sure. Roundup. And then every time I see, every time I write Rumor Roundup, that's yeah. I, oh, that's I sing it in my head in that way. Gotcha. And kind of so good movie though. Is it like a sequel to Coco? No. It is very similar to Coco. Like the feel is similar to Coco. Oh, okay. Um, it's good though. I like it a lot. I like Coco a lot too though. Yeah, baby yeah, loves it, which is why we watch it all the time. Yeah, well, baby loves good music. I was we were talking about it, like you realize this, like he's gonna bring home a girlfriend at some point that is the fucking girl from Encanto. And we're gonna look at each other and be like, "We should have seen this coming." Like, this would be best when you start making movie references and neither of them remembered at that point. Yeah, and she's going. <laughs> And then you can't stop yourself from singing a song. And yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about some rumor roundup. Jason Schreier has said that a Final Fantasy Tactics remaster is coming. Okay. Insider gaming sources have revealed that a Metro Exodus sequel by 4A Games is well into development and is fully playable. I miss the days where, like, games came out of nowhere. I miss, yeah. Uh, yeah. I miss a lot of things. That's up there. Nostalgia. Games weren't I'm broken old. on day one. There weren't day yeah. one patches. Yep. There was magazines. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> demo discs. Uh, demo discs. I do. I don't like. I love the idea of demo discs, and they were great at the time. But I would hate demo discs nowadays. I either have a stack or had a stack. I don't know if it's still upstairs of demo discs. That I mean, like a stack. We um. We survived off of demo discs for a long time when we got our first PlayStation, like the original PlayStation. There's specifically a story, and I don't know if I've told it on here before. I assume I have. We've been doing this long enough where I repeat a lot of things. That there was a demo disc that had Fear on it. I think it was Fear 2 or 3 specifically. I think 2. Mm-hmm. And Kenny was over one night. Probably 2 in the morning. We were downstairs in the living room with the Xbox hooked up to the TV. And we're playing demo discs because we want to play a bunch of different games. It's my phone. Don't worry about it. And weird coincidence that well, <laughs> doing a snap by the same person. My brother just watched the Savannah Banana live stream. That was fun. I like the different rules. That is a weird coincidence because did your brother buy tickets to them in Cooperstown? I think they, they did actually. They are coming to Cooperstown. Anyway, unrelated to that. Uh, we were playing Fear 2 downstairs at like 2 a.m. And the beginning of the demo is you're kind of in like this, I don't know, you back area of a building, chain link fences, yada, yada. Mm-hmm. And there's a sewer pipe that you can see to the end of. And there's a light down there. It's kind of dark in the pipe, and then there's a light down there. And you just see her shadow. Oh, yeah, the little girl run, run by. by. Yep. And Kenny wanted to just kill her. Yeah. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill that little girl. And we kept getting, like, jump scared and kept restarting the demo just trying to kill her one night. But that was just, you know, demo discs. Demo discs. Good times. Anyway, speaking of other... In case you're curious, he said he doesn't think they're released yet. Him, Heather, and Mom are all on the wait list. Yeah, I I couldn't tell if they were out yet because I am also in the hunt for them. Okay, so I will... While you're doing, are you in the next story? Am I? You're doing. I'm story. still. I've still got. I got more rumors, man. Cooperstown and Syracuse. Yeah, both. All right, I'm gonna get on the wait list for that then. Yeah, just put us on both. We'll go to both. I don't give a shit. Watch some banana ball, man. Anyway, let's talk about Tom Henderson's list. It says podcast becoming a Tom Henderson podcast. Tom Henderson's list of what to expect from Ubisoft for E3 or whatever the hell they're calling it. Just Dance 2024, man. Hey, shocker, shocker. Assassin's Creed Mirage and Nexus. Can't wait till I have to explain those to the general public. Oh, yeah. It's one thing to us. It's another thing to the overall population. Mirage will be fine. Nexus will be the issue. The Division Heartland will also be confusing. Yeah, that one's the one I'm probably most... X-Defiant. Surprise, they're still making it. Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. Probably will get the most hype. Skull and Bones, not out yet by that point, which is fucking hysterical. The Crew Motorfest, easy sell. Mario plus Rabbids, Sparks of Hope, DLC 2. I don't think that's what that means, but that's an easy one, too. Uh, another rumor, Tencent is abandoning plans to venture into virtual reality hardware due to economic outlook and the lack of metaverse development. Good idea, Tencent. Uh, 
This is the crazy. Wait, I totally didn't hear what you said about the Division Three. Because it's not in there. It's the Division Heartland. Did you skip? No. I didn't skip anything. After- did you did you write something in and you're lying to me? There should be something between Metro Exodus and Tom Henderson's list. According to Insider Gaming, sources at Ubisoft said there are currently no plans for the Division 3. I gotcha. Uh, no, because it's called the Division Heartland. What the okay. fuck are we doing? Obviously, that's the case. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's just still that's, sad to was, hear. That's the next logical progression. No, it's not sad to hear. You want to know why it's not sad to hear, Matt? Yes. Tell me. Get one good game out first. Get back on your feet. Because I don't have faith in Ubisoft. If they came out today and they said, we're doing the Division 3, I'd be like, you haven't released any? You Skull and Bones still isn't out. That's true. You know what? Why don't you hang on to that thought? We'll keep going. I don't want to hang on to that thought. <laughs> I want to burn that thought. I don't want to think about Skull and Bones. I've been thinking about it for six years. Every well, time you hang I do, on to that thought. I have because, to make fun of you for Because it. we're going to get through everything, and we're going to end on Skull and Bones again. Oh, my God. He did this to me on purpose. Skull and bone ya. <laughs> promise? I hate, I promise? Like, I hate myself. You promise? <laughs> <laughs> don't, make, don't make comments. You can't cash. <laughs> Now for questionable things we didn't write full paragraphs on. You know, maybe two sentences. Did I keep it below two sentences? We'll find out. Man, I think this time mainly it is. The semi-official trade body for China's games industry has said there should be more restrictions on the time and money spent on video games by young people. Brainwash those little shits. <laughs> Matt, running for Chinese Prime Minister 2025. Uh Dead Island 2's launch has been pulled forward a week to April 21st. What's coming out around it that it doesn't want to compete with? Nah, maybe maybe they're just, you know, trying to get some goodwill. I'm always skeptical. I don't trust anyone. <laughs> Epic announced that in conjunction with GDC 2023, they'll be holding a new State of Unreal showcase. Unbelievable. The Unreal. company promises updates on the latest Unreal, Unreal Engine 5 tech and a look at new projects, some of which will likely be coming from their talented partners. Esports organization VSPO. Do you know what that is? Have you heard of that? VSPO? That I've, I've maybe heard of it, but I can't. I don't know what they do. Okay. They're not one that I follow, so. Uh, they've received a $265 million investment from Savvy Games Group. Savvy Games Group is owned by Saudi Arabia's Public Investment Fund. Speaking of Saudi Arabia's investment fund, they have once again increased its stake in Nintendo this week. Twice! <sighs> uh, first to 7.08% at the beginning of the week, and then today they were bumped it up to 8.26%. Which, uh, outside of Nintendo, that's, you know, they own the most. Outside of Nintendo itself, I guess. They own they own the most shares. Uh, the game industry saw $51.5 billion in investments, mergers, and acquisitions for 2022. Interesting. U- Ubisoft veteran Jean Gustan. That's a very Ubisoft veteran name has left ubisoft montreal after almost two decades gustan's credits at ubisoft include working as creative director on assassin's creed 4 black flag and origins give me a little give me a little give me a little name a little ubisoft name jean gustan like yeah 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 <laughs> moisture than moisture than an oyster over here that's so good uh <laughs> <laughs> um, I threw some sim racing stuff in here. Ren of course Sport- he did. <laughs> I can't get away from him. He doesn't let me leave. <laughs> Ren Sport CEO Morris Hebecker. 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 You Becker. I Becker. We <laughs> Becker. All Becker. <laughs> Said, quote, at the moment we focus 100% on the PC version, but I'm quite sure there'll be a console version in the future, end quote. Game looked good. It did. I don't know if this is about to come up. I'm I it's not. 
It's not. I was shocked by how good it looked based look- on the fact that that there's not even a beta for it yet. The game is called Ren Sport. And they used it for IEM Keravice uh ESL racing tournament. Yeah. And it looked very good production, good color commentators. Mm. Not bad. Very well done. Like actually something that for I would first try. I like was if impressed. it was consistently that quality on like the weekends, I'd tune in. Yeah. Yep. Format similar to how they do um uh they they I think though I think it was spread across three days with like pre- prelims. I at least semi, saw two mods, so yeah. Yeah. It was either it should have been yeah, either two days two or, or three, three days. days. Yeah. But yeah, it was very very well done. Yep. I was actually impressed. Compared Short to, races, I think they're twenty minutes apiece. Yeah. Compared to so. the shit show that is normally I racing or that is normally oh, oh sorry, not I racing. I don't want to throw them under the bus, but I racing. Uh compared to that normal shit show, it was pretty good. Yeah. Actually compared to that shit show it was amazing. But. Yeah. And then the dark side of the sim racing, uh, the Internet's leading sim racing community and mod depository race department has been purchased by German media outlet Overtake.gg. Overtake.gg became public in 2020 as run by the digital marketing agency Freaks for You Gaming, which is really just a shadow company uh, because their funding is from Porsche. Interesting. So that entire warehouse was bought by Porsche. Yeah, and Porsche is notorious for not. The whole thing with race department is, uh, it's the, it's like probably the biggest or one of the biggest places for like the sim racing community, the forums, mm-hmm. and then uh, all everyone puts their mods on race department for like a set of course and all that. Not anymore. Yep, Porsche notorious for not liking mods that involve Porsches fun. or fun, <laughs> or yeah or fun or anything else. Yeah, yeah. So. There you go. Um, this is an obvious one, but I threw it in here anyways. In the early draft of God of War Ragnarok, Kratos was killed by Thor in their first fight. Uh, then Atreus was going to pull Kratos out of hell after a 20-year time jump. I kind of like that they don't do that. Yeah, because they, a... they tell a similar story. Because mm-hmm. I think it still would have happened at the end. Like, the Kratos dies again, but it would have been a very similar story to one that is told in the game. Yeah. I get why they didn't, and they even said the reason why they didn't is because they did it already too many times. Yeah. But I do like the idea of the 20-year time jump and then Atreus pulling him out. I kind of think that would that could have been interesting. Also glad they didn't go down that yeah. route, though. But it also would have been weird to have the same actor yeah. do Atreus again. Yeah, they would have probably had to find someone else. Yeah, you probably would have had to recast it. Um, also Apex. Be funny if he was as swole as Kratos. They were just like, oh. <laughs> um, Apex Legends design director said they want Apex Legends to last for twenty years, like Counter Strike. I respect that's the hope. That's some I- ambition. Yeah, I think Most that... Most of you won't be at the studio. I think that Counter-Strike is an anomaly. Yeah, for multiple reasons. Yeah. There's yeah. a reason that there hasn't been one sent to go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's... it's. I, I don't mean, think it's well, possible There's, there's to multiple do that. reasons there hasn't been one sent to go. Uh, one, that's Valorant right now. Mm-hmm. Two, Valve made Counter-Strike, so, well, there's your reason there's not another one. And also... Counter Strike is its purest, simplistic version of a shooter that you can have that can yeah. run on almost anything. Yep, it's the wow of shooters. I'll take it. Yeah. I I don't know if that's a compliment or an insult. Yeah, or... I'm not really sure how the, which way that goes. Yeah, but you know, there's they, there's enough similarities. <laughs> there's a couple games that just won't fucking die. <laughs> Cockroaches of the gaming world. Yeah, exactly. Tetris. Did Mario. you see the trailer for Tetris? Yeah, yeah. What is that? <laughs> I don't know. Is it real? Like, is it true? I think so. All right. Well, I don't know about, like, the... Yeah. I don't, I don't know if it's based on a true story or anything, but the movie exists. Yeah, the movie's real. All right. Crystal Dynamics and Eidos Montreal, Eidos, whatever, the, however you say that, are set to release five AAA games by March 2028. Cool. Well, just for anybody doing math, 
That means one starts now. Yeah. One a year? One a year. Between two studios? Ping pong them back and forth? But that still means you start this year. Yeah. Yeah. Or they plan on releasing two games in one year. Yeah. So have you got quick math. I'm I dumb. You got that abacus. I done. You got that abacus over there, just <laughs> sliding things back and forth. Got that calculator watch. That's true. Uh, Sony you is. You can see my my calculations. <laughs> I've tried. I tried using that. Impossible to use. Oh by no, the they're way. impossible to use. They were. They were a good like joke, but they were never meant to actually function. Yeah. Uh, Sony has added five more games to the PSVR 2's launch window, bringing the total to over forty. The titles are Green Hell VR, which I'm very disappointed is not about the Nuremberg Ring. Nuremberg, Nur, Nuremberg Ring. Nur, the Nordschleife. Uh, Gorn, Solaris, Offworld Combat 2, Project Wingman, and Wanderer Remastered. Uh, the Nordschleife's uh, nickname is Green Hell. The Green Hell. I was like, you're just going to keep... Yeah? Yep. Yeah. All right. uh, seg- uh, uh, go ahead. The, the... Yeah, no, fuck it, never mind. Sure. I was gonna take a step back to the thing we were talking about right before that, but I, I literally now forgot the joke, so I'm moving on. All right, my bad. No, it's not your fault. I I had it and then I forgot it, and now it doesn't matter. Uh, Sega Sammy has announced that it'll be increasing the salaries of its workforce in Japan by thirty percent. Hey Blizzard, yeah, get Actually, your heads you know out of your asses. Every company, yeah, <laughs> my company, give me money, money. I like money. All right. I'm going to be like the, the kid just doing the <laughs> Give me. Give me. Uh, so we're not going to end on Skull and Bones, but close enough. He jabated me. Skull and Bones update. During Ubisoft's quarterly financial call, Ubisoft CFO said, quote, We have a very strong, improved version to show players that we that they haven't seen yet. So this is really what we're going to leverage in the next month to drive more momentum on the game, end quote. It would have been better if they never mentioned it. Yes. Well. And that would have been a better story. You would have liked the other quote of what one of the, um, I don't know what he was. You know, the people that ask questions, they're in investor calls. Usually investors. They're either investors or proxies for investors. Yeah, yeah. Did not, dude, did not hold back on ripping on Skull and Bones. He said what he basically was like, what's the deal with Skull and Bones? Because I read the early reviews and they're not good. And I was like, yeah, go for the fucking throats. I wouldn't I, if I ever got in one of those calls, it'd be so what's the deal with Skull and Bones, a game you announced multiple years ago before the game even had a preview. You announced an HBO show. Both have not seen the light of day. You had the game almost getting ready to come out during developer previews and then pulled it. Yeah. What are we doing? Why do you guys suck? Why haven't you canceled this? If I call seems... for a vote of no confidence. Are we into sunk, ca- sunk cost fallacy territory yet? Does Skull and Bones have a Stockholm Syndrome with you, Eve Gimel? <laughs> and then finally, uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor will have human dismemberment. Let's go. I... Remove them limbs. Remove them limbs. Oh, I'm going to cut your dick off. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Sorry. Give him the old dick twist. <laughs> Uh, Grab his dick and twist it. Uh, so good. So oh my god, it's a UFC fight. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Uh, all right. I love it. Uh, new bases this year. New bases, bigger bases. Yeah, baseball. Eighteen inches instead of fifteen. I wish. <laughs> to fucking, if I could just add three inches, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, what else is weird? No it shift. Was, that was no shift, right? And then uh, uh pitch pitch uh pitch clock. Pitch clock, yeah. There you go, guys. Runner on second and uh, extra yep. time. Yep, run on second. Position dive. players limited to only be pitching in the ninth inning or later. Interesting. I, I, be- I believe it's the ninth inning or later. Also, when the winning team is up by ten runs or the losing team is down by eight runs. Like those situations have to be met for them to throw somebody in. That's cool. I like that. I like that. 
got my fantasy draft coming up pretty soon. So. Oh, fuck. Yeah. yeah. I think we're supposed to be starting next week. It's a slow draft. It's like one round or like your pick. You have eight hours to make your pick. Oh, wow. We we it's just our first year player draft, so we only have to we only have like seven rounds or something. Oh, and we have all the time in the world because the season doesn't. So start do for you like a month, you keep so. your previous team? Yeah, I've kept every, you keep everybody except for I think we cut down to six or we cut six away. Uh huh. So I have forty five I keep or whatever. That's pretty dope. Yep. So this is how we pick up the people that got drafted last year, or mm-hmm. the people that uh, like the rookies that got drafted out of college. Uh, and the international yeah. signings. Like, you can't pick them up in season. You pick them up now. Hmm. Cool. Yep. Pretty cool. So, I got that coming up. Got to do a little bit of prep for whenever that happens. And fun times. Anyway, it's been, uh, been seven days. Actually, it's been six days, technically, and five, depending on how you view time. What have, <laughs> <laughs> what have, you, uh, what have you been up to? Time is a human construct. It actually is, technically. Yeah. Um,. What have I been up to? I've been, I've been, no one answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been listening to The Hobbit, the book. Interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. That's not why I was thinking interesting, but yeah, could go on. Um, it's more interesting of why you're listening to it. What do you mean? It's not your normal. I know. It's, it's I, weird. I mean, I, I get it. There are wars I, that happen in The Hobbit, but there's it's very much not a story about Grand Admiral yada yada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and I'll no be honest rear, with you. There's no I'm, Rear Admiral in the Battle of the Five Armies. I'm, I'm having a real hard time getting through it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's not, I don't know. It's like a good book, but it's not a, I can't imagine listening to it because there's a lot of dryness, in the be- especially in the beginning. It is. You know what's? It's nice though because it's a newer version and it's Andy Circus who's, who's oh interesting. It. Okay, so it's it's, it's so it's Gollum reading it. Yeah, yeah. He does obviously he does Gollum at Gollum yeah. part, so it's good. Um, I've been playing Hogwarts Legacy. I put another probably eight hours into it, seven to eight hours into it. Still a wizard. Still a wizard with oh, level one. three Alohomora. Unlock all your doors. Um, <laughs> honestly, couldn't remember if it was that or if that was the one that turned lights on. So we're good. Uh, Luminos. Yeah, that one. Um, I, re- I remember the movies. I think I'm going to revise my statement prior. I don't know which statement that of is. Of saying that it feels kind of like a Bethesda game. Okay. And I'm going to switch allegiances and say it feels kind of like an Ubisoft game. That, I don't know, actually. I was going to say, that's bad. I, I don't know anymore. It might be, might be the I, same. It has the potential of having Assassin's Creed problems where it's there's it's too big or too, like, there's, there's too much garbage, you know what I mean? Too much filler. All right, all right. It might have a too much filler problem. All killer. No filler. Too much filler. Yep. Uh, no killer, all filler. That's yeah, right. no that's, killer, that's, all filler. That's, that's, that's there we go. Yeah. Um, we'll get there. And what it looks like, and I, I, I'm only 15 hours in. 15? 18. I don't know. You said 14 earlier. So. Yeah. All right. So no. maybe 15. Get your numbers right. <laughs> I don't know. Somewhere's around there. And um, I think my theory is that all of the, the, the density of things and quality and, like, you know, interestingness is in Hogwarts and Hogsmeade. And then once you branch out to the rest of the map, because the map is fucking enormous, it there's the density is way less. As far as like interestingness, gotcha. But yeah, we'll see. So I'm um, got that going on. Um, the sim racing stuff is always in the back of my mind. Always, every well, time I close the door when I come to get home, the boxes are stacked up of the sim rig, uh-huh. and they're haunting me. Um, so that's always eating away at me. And that's, that's about it. Watching The Last of Us still. Show's fine. Show's good. Watching the animes. Um, living life. What are you up to? Tell me about. I was going to go back to a little bit of Hogwarts because you see the conversation with Dewey the other day. Um, I saw, I think he said 6.5. Was that what I saw or? Yeah, 6.57. I didn't see any of the details if there were. He had like a paragraph explaining his th- his thought process. I didn't get a chance. 
this week has been like. But I have no frame show. of reference for like what he was saying, so yeah. I was like, I don't. Do you remember anything that he said? Or uh, I, I it's probably been over twenty four hours, so it's probably not safe nurse though. Probably not. Uh, I will just double check. I mean, he's everything. Anything he said is probably true, and I would I would agree. Like it's slowly. Nope, it's not in there. It, I I would like I think I said it was a seven, and then like if you throw the high, the Harry Potter stuff on, it's an eight. Yeah, I would probably, I would probably readjust that a half point to a full point down. I got you. Yeah, it, the game's That's, fine. It's just, it's just the, it's just like a, a content thing. You know, it's just a. Yeah, the, it sounds similar to what he was saying. Of, that be people see yeah. if he listens and then immediately messages one of us. But yeah, mm-hmm. that was the combat's easy. You know, like the the lore is what you would expect. It's Harry Potter. Yeah. That's lore. Yeah, I th- I feel like it's a it's a Harry Potter game, mm-hmm. and then it's a wizard game. Yeah, yeah. Where it's not flipped, where it's a really good wizard game that happens mm-hmm. to be in Harry Potter. Yeah. So we've been up to. <sighs> World of Warcraft. <laughs> The old World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft. Listening to uh, the Final Witcher book still. Uh, listening to a lot more. Uh, listening to Rates and Barrels. What's that? It is a. I want to say it's a fantasy focused baseball podcast. Um, it's more like a stat focused baseball podcast. So fantasy is currently the rave. Mm-hmm. So they're going through each position and like discussing where they like to draft players and yada yada and they're. Their statistics and their K rates and their K minus walk good rate name. and it's rates and barrels. And do you want to know why it's a good name? It's got well, it's got one person on it that you don't know. That's Derek Von Riper, DVR. Okay. It's got another name you do know, but you haven't really ever listened to much content of them. And it's Eno Saris. Okay. And it's those two ripping through all the baseball stuff that I love. Yeah, I could see how that would. You, I could see how you'd like that. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah, I would imagine it's probably might, it's probably a little too deep for me, but I could appreciate. I appreciate that it exists. When I, I ha- I'll have to get to like a normal episode because it's basically just been fantasy episodes. That I've just kind of been mm-hmm. like seeing if they align with where I think people are, and mm-hmm. so far we're pretty much in the same boat on everything. Um, with a little like, oh, I might move this person up or down, kind of, but it's not not like I can't believe you think this. Like, no, it, that checks out basically. I just had um, a random thought related to baseball. I think we're going through the era of sexy baseball players. That is a sentence. But you're not wrong. Like, they all have, like, extremely cut jaw lines, and, like, they all look... I would, I would argue with you and say that it's not just baseball players. I just would athletes. argue that athletes are the sexiest they've ever been. You're probably right. That's probably 100% right. Anyways, back to... Uh, Rates and Barrels podcast. It's an easy observation. Mm-hmm. This is it not. Is. I'm is. not taking credit for what I think is a pretty fucking obvious thought. It is. But I'm going to take some credit for it. That's fine. Well, um, I mean, you got to take the credit for having the courage to say it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It goes back to the, the fudge thing earlier. He's an attractive man. What do you want me to do about yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, um, just state, state the obvious. But yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a very good one. I think it would... I think if you in season had talking baseball on Wednesdays and Fridays or whatever, Mondays and Fridays, Mondays and Wednesdays, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. If you had that and then you interspersed it with this, you'd have, Hey, here's the overview of how everything kind of went. Mm-hmm. Hey, here's your nerd. Yeah. You could, pair yeah, them, I mean, it's, pair well, it's like, well. it's like uh, to me in my mind, it's like, you know, leveling up as far as like, sure, fandom. sure, sure. You know, like, once you're getting like heavy into the stats and like the nitty gritty of it, like I'm at like I don't even know. I can't even think of a frame of reference, but I can't like I couldn't tell you, you know, seventy five percent of every every roster. But I don't think I could either, frankly. No. That's a lot. That is that is a lot. You know, but of like the main people, like I can I, I know I, let's, some let's players. Say this. Could you name the starting nine on every team? No, I don't think you could. No, I definitely could not. I think I could probably do it on mm, over half the league. Yeah. yeah. Then when it gets to the bottom half, it's a little. Mm. I'm at the point where like I could probably I know the names of like maybe the top like the stars. Sure. And then like 
if I'm looking at faces, I could be able to probably be like, oh, I know, I recognize that guy. He's a pitcher on this team, but I couldn't tell you his name. Or you know what I mean? Like, like do you that know type who, of thing. Do you know who that is? I do not. That is Tyler Anderson. Okay. He does it, no longer play on that team. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, where were we? Yeah. yeah so that's, that's base, baseball season. Super Bowl's over. Yeah. Super Bowl. Um, do you have any strong feelings about it? No, I didn't watch really. it. I mean, I watched it. It was a good game, but. Uh, Made my money back in the bets I made, so. Okay. Broke even. Yep, I literally broke even. Uh, I was off by, on two different bets, I was off by a leg in each of them from making a lot much of money. more money. A lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> not, not like I'm retiring money, but. Yeah, like, yeah, but like, uh, but like it's going to be. <laughs> but like, man, my computer could actually get fixed money. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Eh, it happens. Yeah. Um. And then that's why I always, you, once you get back to even, I go, you know what? All right, I'm good. This is a good time. If I didn't get back to even, it would have been worse. Yeah. I mean, I, re- I really did not bet that much money. So. Not like it matters anyway. I, I do, when I do bet, it's small money with crazy odds. So you get like some people that yes. would do like a $100 bet knowing that if it hits, it's, you know, like a, hundred dollar return or whatever mm. like a, a kind of easy one to like double your money or whatever and i'm like no no i'm gonna bet two dollars and make it like seventy thousand odds yeah that's my type of nuts. bet that's the, that's my, my type of bet where you kind of like write the money off yeah, yeah yeah like oh i could buy a bag of chips or make a silly bet and yeah i'll feel equally satisfied regardless of the outcome <laughs> yeah if i eat the <laughs> chips i'll pay for it and the, and the bag run. was half empty to begin with <laughs> yeah or I, or I toss, might make a lot of money and be real happy. Uh, yeah, I toss two dollars into the wind anyway, and I potentially am much happier later. You know, it's yeah. um. So yeah, it it was whatever uh, for me. It's a neutral game. Watching league, watching MDI started this weekend, so more dungeon running is in my future. Mm. More WoW is in my future. How's MLB your the show uh, will be coming up here pretty soon? Yeah, that's right. Doing their technical test this week, I believe. So, or they did their technical test. So, they'll start the, doing um, their their preview streams and stuff where they're showing features and yada yada. Mm-hmm. The um, Negro League stuff, I think, is really interesting. I'm wondering. I don't. Maybe you have seen some of it, but like, how I haven't seen anything more than them like announcing that they were doing it. Because I I saw that I heard that they were it's going to be like us. I whatever they do their storyline stuff moments. Yes. Yeah. Um, but is it going to be anything outside of that? No I, one knows yet. I'm assuming my guess is it'll be like the players will exist in the game for, uh, like offline leagues and yada, yada. They will mm-hmm. have cards in diamond dynasty for sure. Yeah. So the ultimate team mode, uh, and there'll probably be a bunch of like, there might be an entire program dedicated to them or depending on how they do their, dynasty diamond dynasty ultimate team content this year there might be an entire thing featured on them they might maybe they feature one a month maybe they feature more like who knows yeah uh they haven't really said anything uh the only thing that i had as a like annoyance was the same thing i said to you guys before Mm -hmm. of all the players they announced i think it or and i think they said and more so of all the ones that they called out by name though which i think was eight of them it was like seven or eight yeah uh satchel page is in there known person yeah but hasn't been like pre- pre- uh, ever in the game so yeah good and then the other ones that haven't been in the game and then jackie robinson and i was like yeah. jackie's been in your guys game for the last x amount of years yeah you i would have rather that spot gone to somebody else mm-hmm. yeah it's the idea while we know that we all know jackie's coming there's jackie robinson day in major league you yeah. are always going to have why not the game. take the opportunity to highlight like someone that, else yeah. that is not known that's my only like I think that's a, I think that's a fair criticism though because like it kind of it's it, like it doesn't hey, here's your right in and then the rest of them except yeah. that right in wasn't an extra spot it was taking up one of some of them. yeah so that's all um but yeah just doing the thing doing life or life's doing me one of the two I don't, uh, know. don't know which is better or worse 
Me either. I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> you let me know when you find out. <laughs> uh, Alrighty. Well, in that case, we'll see you guys in seven days. Bye-bye.